All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo ThinkPad Yoga 370. All right, so the way you know is the model number is actually printed right there, Yoga 370. Okay, um, if you are taking out the screen, there's two screws hidden under here. I'm not going to be doing that because the only issue is it's not powering up. So the customer wants me to figure out why and if I can fix it, obviously. But if you want to remove the screen, there's two screws hidden under here, and then you can actually take this bezel out, I'm pretty sure. But again, I'm not gonna mess with that. I think I've done some other models that are similar. So if you really need that, um, I think I might have some videos just search around for these similar models, Lenovo Yoga models. All right, anyways, we're gonna be using a JS1 screwdriver to undo all the screws on the bottom. All right, so just um, twist them until they stop. So as you can see, the screws actually stay in place. They're actually held in with some little washers. Uh, so the screws won't actually come out completely. Just undo it until you hear that click like that. You hear it? Okay. And that's how you know the screws out all the way. All right. Sometimes after it clicks, it'll catch back in and then you might have to unscrew it while you're like pulling up the cover. So keep that in mind. All right. If this video helps you out, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. Leave a comment, and if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel, right? Even if it's just like a dollar, or even if it's just like a penny. Like, um, I'd appreciate that more than I know some people are like, I don't want to give like too little because I'll feel bad, but don't worry about it. If everybody that said that gave me a penny, um, it'd be a lot of money. So I'd be happier to receive a penny than to receive nothing at all. So, <laughs> all right. Anyways, let's go ahead and undo all these screws. Um, and some people will say, well, I watched your video. It gives me like a 0 0.0001 cent. So... <laughs> or something like that, a fraction of a penny. All right, anyways, once you get all these screws out, oh, one other thing, there's this little hole here. That's a battery reset button. So if for some reason your computer's not turning on, you can try pressing and holding that button. There's, you can use like a little pin or a folded out paper clip. You can actually feel it click when you push it. You can press and hold that for about 15 seconds to drain any residual power. There's also, um, it looks like a SIM card slot here and a SD card slot. Okay, so it looks like looks like the SD card goes, the micro SD card goes at the top and then the SIM goes on this little tray. So if you wanted to add a mobile internet uh, connection, it looks like you can do that. Um, I mean, if you own this laptop, you should know that you have also that um, card there. Uh, I'm not sure what this slot's for, but it doesn't look like I can even get this thing out. So yeah, I don't know. Some of them have like this slot for a smart card. Then you got a USB, um, uh, USB 3.0 port. You have this little spot, um, you'll need an adapter, I'm sure it came with the lap, or probably came with the laptop for the ethernet port, USB-C port, and then you got the charge port, okay? I mean, you probably know all that stuff. The reason why I was looking around in here is because a lot of times Lenovo's have a one key recovery, but I don't see one on this model, which is kind of strange. So I'm not sure on this model how you would go to the BIOS. I think when it powers up, you can press enter and then um, I think F12 lets you go to the boot menu or something. Anyways, that's not what we're here for. We're, we're going to open this up. Okay, so um, as you can see, this one kind of already popped out, but the way I usually will pop this out is I'll get my fingernails in the gap here, and I'll push with my thumb on the uh, palm rest. Don't push on the touchpad, just on the palm rest. And there you can see it popped out. Okay, and that's how we get the front part of the cover. We're gonna go around to the side now. So what I'll do is I'll get my fingernails in there and then I'll keep pulling it up and I'll just run my fingernail along the side here to pop the other clips. There you go, and we'll do the same. Obviously you can do this with plastic pry tools as well. My fingernails are just built into my hands so I don't really use other tools and if they break, I have like free replacements so it'll grow back. All right, anyways, um, now we're gonna tilt this up and then we can pull this out. And the reason why you need to go that way, the customer already tried to get this out on their own but here you can see these little clips here. They actually go into the back case and they stick out a lot further. So if you try and rip this side up, most likely you'll end up breaking these clips. Somehow their clips survived but uh, Usually you'll end up breaking the clips if you try and do it that way. This thing's kind of dusty, so I'm going to have to clean it off. Um, I actually did clean out the inside earlier before making this video because it was having issues turning on. I did a battery reset, CMOS, BIOS, battery drain, and everything, and then um, still wasn't able to turn on until I like cleaned all of this up. So let me actually show you what I did to try and get this working. Okay, I'm at, Let me actually clean off the dust here real quick on this cover. 
Okay. Sorry, I'm doing this off to the side into a trash can. All right, so here you can see it's a lot cleaner now, okay? Um, usually when I open up these computers, I like to try and make them at least a little bit cleaner so that they last longer. Dust isn't going to be built up and overheat it. Um, but there we go. We got that bottom cover off. Okay, so I'm going to put this here, get a thumbnail real quick, check a message while I'm waiting. Okay. And then... Um, okay, so next thing we're going to do, um, like I said, this one, for the most part, it was dead when they brought it. It wasn't turning on. It wasn't charging the battery. So I basically had to take this thing apart, clean it all off. I'm not going to take the motherboard out this time, but I'm going to go ahead and open this up and show you guys. So the battery here that they have is, you can see this battery is a tiny bit inflated, but not too much. Um, maybe over time it might get worse. I'll tell them don't leave it plugged in when it's like off because that's usually what ends up making these batteries go worse. Um, but here they have the battery part number here, um, SB10K97591, all right? So there you go. You got the power button board here. It looks like there's one screw holding it. I don't know if there's anything hidden underneath that foam, but that connector, you can kind of grab it and you can wiggle it and pull it out. This one, you might have to use like some needle nose pliers because there's not really much area to grip. The cable goes around over here. And let me actually take the battery out of this one just so you can see underneath. Okay. So I'll take this screw out here. You want to keep the screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and length. Um, I didn't mention that because the earlier because the bottom cover screws stay in, but I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern and I remove them. So you got one screw there, you got one screw here, okay. And then I think we should be able to lift it up, right? I didn't forget anything. Okay, so I'll go underneath here and lift up from the back. And you can see we can lift the battery up, okay? So now that we are able to lift the battery up, we're gonna go ahead and pull the connector out. So the way you get the connector out, um, you go here at the wings and you kind of just wiggle this. I use my fingernails and wiggle and pull and there you go, it pops back a little bit. Once you get it to pop back a little bit, you can go ahead and lift the battery back up and then you can pull the whole thing out. And there you go, that's the battery. Okay, so we'll set that aside. Here you can see the touchpad trackpad connector here. Okay, you have the Hall effect sensor, I believe. Um, this one is to detect when the screen closes. Um, I can actually show you this. So I have this little magnet um, thing that detects like the magnetic fields. So if I put this, I wanna be careful, slowly open this up. But if I put this here, you can actually see, oh, there's too much glare but you can actually see that black patch, that's where the magnet is. So when you close that, basically that magnet affects here and it tells it that the screen has been closed and that's how it knows if it's in tablet mode or if it's been um, screen closed or whatever, okay? Then you got the touchpad trackpad connector here with a little flip latch to release. You can pull this cable out. You got the fingerprint sensor connector here. Same thing, there's a flip latch and you can pull that cable out. All right, um, and then you got the pen slot here with this little cable here, which actually charges the pen. You can actually see the gold contacts there that touch the pen right there when you put that in, and then that plugs in right here. All right, you got this for the JBTN for the button, okay? Actually, where? Okay, yeah, so this one connects to the Hall effect sensor, and then there's one underneath this little board that connects up to here. Then you got this little cable um, going to the fingerprint sensor, this one for the keyboard, keyboard backlight, and then um, you got the CMOS BIOS RTC battery here, real-time clock battery. You can grab that connector, wiggle it, and pull it out. If you replace it, make sure you get it right. You can see the black wire is going towards the keyboard connector, and the red wire is going towards the keyboard backlight connector or the touchpad, whatever it makes it easier for you to tell. All right, you got this little connector here going to this board for the headphone jack, okay? Um, this is actually a headset jack, so it actually does audio and microphone. Here you can see the SD card slot. Um, you got the wireless card here, antennas, you go from the tail and you pop them up. I don't wanna mess around with it unless absolutely necessary because usually the solder joints here can be kind of weak and sometimes they'll break off. It's not very often, but it does happen. So I'm not gonna mess with that. 
And here you can see if you need the model or part number information, it's super tiny, so I don't know if you can read it, but uh, yeah, all right. Um, it's a 8265 NGW uh, Intel chip. You can open yours and check that as well. If you can't open the bottom cover, then don't even bother ordering the part because this one is pretty easy to open. So if you can't do that, yeah, you don't want to mess around with that. All right, they got this chip here. It says JWWAN1. So I think that's actually for the SIM card. So if you don't put this chip, I think the SIM card wouldn't work. But at the same time, they don't have antennas built in here. So I don't know how it's going to work <laughs> because normally you'll have an extra set of antennas coming down here to plug into here. All right. Um, you got the speaker connector here, which actually connects the two speakers. One speaker here, this wire's following over here and then plugs in there. You got the fan connector here with uh, right there. All right, then you got these two connectors going into the screen. These cables, if you're gonna mess with them after disconnecting the battery, it's very, 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 very important that after you disconnect the battery, you open the laptop um, at least 90 degrees or so, press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain any, any residual power. Because if you don't, there's a good chance when you pull this out, if it doesn't come up straight and doesn't come out like quickly, it can arc, it can um, damage this cable, it can damage the motherboard, it can damage your screen. So be very careful. Make sure that you press and hold the power button at least 15 seconds to make it a lot safer. Um, if you didn't, I warned you. And if you skipped around the video, that's not my fault, all right? So these cables, you'll grab here and then you can pull it up. A lot of times they don't come out easily, so I get underneath with my fingernail and pop it up while I'm kind of pulling it up with my other hand. Um, so this one I believe is the LCD LVDS, and this one is probably for the touch screen or the um, camera, microphone, stuff like that. Okay, I don't know what, what it actually is for because I'm not gonna pull it out and then see what happens. So, <laughs> all right, they have this uh, JNFC connector here so I think some models have an NFC uh, controller or something that goes in this spot I think and then there's the JSCR1 um, which is probably for this smart card reader I think that's what SCR stands for right so as you can see they just have this plastic blocking it so there's nothing in there okay um, I think there's not much else in here. Um, oh, I didn't mention there's this, um, what do you call this switch here, which basically tells it that the cover has been removed. So basically this switch needs to be down so it knows that the cover is back on, but it will know that there has, it has been tampered with and the cover has been removed if you end up tripping that switch. All right. There's also this button here, which as I showed earlier, there's a hole in the back of the cover and that leads to there. Um, the other, oh, I forgot to mention the obvious two main things. Um, well, first, CPU is soldered to the motherboard and it's integrated, the GPU is integrated in it. So don't ask me if the CPU can be replaced or the GPU can be replaced. If you are able to do it, then you should already know because it needs special tools and lots of special knowledge and skills. It's not something that anyone can just do unless you buy another motherboard compatible that you can swap out. All right, then you got this. Uh, PCIe NVMe SSD one screw it you can pull it up slightly and then pull it back and it should come out if you are going to replace that keep in mind uh, because a lot of people that do this don't know what they're doing the operating system is on there so you're not going to have windows or anything if you swap out the uh, drive and you're not going to be able to turn on your computer it's not going to boot it's just going to go to the Lenovo screen maybe the BIOS or something so you do need to clone your hard drive this drive to the new one before you swap it out or you need to be able to or you sh sorry or you need to create a Windows bootable drive before you um, swap it out either that or you're going to have to use another computer to do it all right then you got the RAM here um, this comes out by pulling these two tabs to the side, pops up slightly, then you can pull this back. And here you go, PC4 2400T. All right, so there we go. We're going to go ahead and get this back in. It goes in at an angle. Make sure that you push it in all the way. All right, and then I like to kind of like wiggle it up and down as I'm pushing it in, and then you can click it down. And that should be it. Um, but the other thing I forgot to show is when it wasn't turning on. I also did a CMOS BIOS reset. The way I did that was I pulled this CMOS BIOS cable out. So I just wiggle it with my thumbs like that or my fingernails. And then after you do that, you get something metal and just short these two pins together. All right, oops, I should zoom in so you can see that better. Okay, so these two pins here, 
Uh, can you see? All right, so those two pins, I just touch it with something metal to drain the power between the two. And on top of that, uh, again, you can open up the laptop and let me zoom out and press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds. So doing that and pushing that button or this button here, the one that's through the case, you can press that for about 15 seconds as well. Um, you actually, well, I would also disconnect the battery to do that. But to reset the BIOS, you usually don't need to remove the uh, battery there. I didn't try doing the BIOS reset without doing removing the battery first, but usually you don't need to remove the main battery to do that. Okay, so we're going to put this battery connector back in, just line it up, pinch the thing together to make sure that it goes in straight. Okay, make sure it's in all the way. Okay, looks good. All right, and then we just got to put the battery back in and make sure it turns on. So the customer was saying before it wasn't charging and everything. Um, I did confirm before that I was able to get it to do, that, to do that. So hopefully nothing got weird from doing this a second time. Anyways, I'm going to pinch this in, okay, just like that. And then we're going to put these two screws down here, okay. So we'll get this one screw down here in. And we'll get this one screw in here in. Um, at this point, you can actually turn it on without this case intrusion switch uh, pushed down, but uh, usually it's better to put the cover back on. So again, at the top here where the hinges are, you want to put this at an angle and get those little feet locked in first. So I'm going to spin this around. We're going to tilt it up like this. Make sure those feet go in. You should see the gap here disappear. And then you can slowly lower this down. We'll rotate this back over. And then we can actually get this screw in, this screw in, and this screw in. All right. And we're going to put back the rest of the screws and make sure to clip everything back in. But that's pretty much all there is to this. Um, I will power it on just to show you that it's working. Um, anyways, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. Leave a comment because YouTube likes to see that. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider, again, contributing a little to the channel, um, especially if you were planning to bring it to someone um, and you were going to have to pay a bunch of money. Yeah, please, like even a few cents, even a penny, it's better than zero. You don't have to be embarrassed. I'll take a penny. Um, if a thousand people gave me a penny, it's 10 bucks. I'll take it. All right, anyways, let's go ahead. And this one, these clips end up being difficult. So what I do is I push it inwards while I push it down. Okay, and sometimes you might have to lift it up, but uh, let's actually put these screws in at least slightly so that the cover can rest um, down. Actually, it goes in all the way without the clips being in, um, but yeah. All right, I think the customer before used a smaller screwdriver because they are a little bit stripped out. Okay, so there we go. You can see these clips aren't engaged all the way. So what I have to do, I'm gonna open it slightly so I'm not pushing on the screen. Um, but basically I'll push it inwards and down at the same time and we should be able to clip that back in, okay? So let me see here, why isn't it going? There we go, okay? Just like that and just like that, okay? So there you can see those clips all went back in and then if it does screw in more, you can go ahead and tighten the screws up a little bit more but I think they're all the way in already. So I think the customer before kind of messed it up a little bit because it has a little bit of give to it. I think they were trying to rip it out um, and they didn't know how. All right, but that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and turn it over, make sure it charges, okay? So we'll get the charger. We'll plug this in and this light is on. It went orange and then now it's green. Hopefully you can see that. Yep, you can see it's green, okay? And then uh, because we did take the BIOS battery out and reset the BIOS, it's gonna take a while to power on. So here you can see this light is actually already green. It's already lit up, so it should be turning itself on. But again, we're gonna have to give it a while because you can see nothing is happening, no caps lock, nothing. Um, but you'll see how long it takes. So the light actually turned off and flashed on and now you can actually see the keyboards on. I heard the fan spinning. We're just gonna give it a little bit longer. Just keep waiting. All right, I'm leaving this in real time so you can actually see how long it takes. Um, but uh, let's see. Okay, the green light is still on. It's 
still going. All right, still green. And there we go. The Lenovo logo came up. You can see the date and time got reset. That's because the BIOS was messed up. So we are going to have to set the date and time again. It is 7-12, March, 7-12 p.m., March 18th. So, oh yeah, they do have the press the enter key to interrupt the start. So we're going to press F1 to go into the setup. And we're going to change the date and time. So let me put this here. It's taking a little while. There we go. So I'm going to go to the right twice. Here you can see the date and time set up. And then we're going to set this. It's uh, March 18th. So we'll press this. So shift plus the this key to go plus, And then without the shift key to go back. All right. So what I say, March 18th. All right. So we're going to go backwards here. March 18th, 2023. Okay, got that, March 20th, 2023. Then we gotta set the time to 7.13. It's in 24 hour time, so uh, seven is, you add two, so it's 19.13. Okay, so oops, I should've went the opposite way. Well, 19 and 13. Um, and we'll add a bunch of seconds here because it was probably um, 7.13 for a while, oops. Okay, and 7.13. Okay, so we'll go back over to the right and then we will save changes and restart, exit saving changes. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So again, hopefully this video helped. Thanks for watching. Again, like, subscribe, comment, consider contributing a little, especially if it helped you save a bunch. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. See you all in the next one. All right, let's drop this. Bye.